Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. Welcome to the next video on my YouTube channel. This is the platform where I come and share my knowledge and experience with you all. So without further delay, let's start the today's video. Today's video is going to be a series of couple of videos and I think it was a very long pending video which I was trying to record it. It took me at least two to three months to figure out and making this whole configuration and the functionality working in Microsoft Dynamics 365. So today we are going to talk about one of the uh, functionality which has been released very long back and I haven't seen this used, uh, uh, used by a lot of people. So I thought like I'm going to create videos on that and this is about the financial insights. So there are some features in as part of financial insights which are available in Dynamics 365 which uses your artificial intelligence predictive models. So we are going to talk about that in today's video. So let's move to the next slide. So before we start talking about uh, the configurations and other stuff, let's talk about what is financial insights. So financial insights provides a, a configurable and extensible solution to help you intelligently predict your company's cash flow, predict when you may receive payments for your outstanding receivable, which means customer payment prediction, and generate budget proposals that can help speed up your budgeting process. So th which means this is available for three key areas as of now. Now these features uses intelligent machine learning templates to build models using the data you provide. And also it including includes the data from third parties such as customer report information from Bureau. These intelligent capabilities inform decision making and helps you to take action to respond effectively to current and anticipated business challenges. Now, when you are using these business the models within this uh, within Dynamics 365, you are responsible for the data which it is going to use. So Microsoft doesn't provide any uh, any data for that uh, predictive analysis. So it is going to use your data. So the accuracy and other things, it depends on the data which you are going to use to use this particular feature. Now, if you remember when I started a series about the Copilot and AI capabilities in FNO, we, I just draw this particular chart and I started talking about, I categorized into the four uh, key areas like you have the Copilot embedded, which has the supply chain and finance features where we talked about changes, workspace for the PO. Then for the finance part, we talked about the collection coordinator summary. Then there is a sidecar, which is available. And then the Copilot for finance, which is your Excel and the Outlook. Now the green ones are the ones where uh, I have already created uh, videos about them. And today we are going to talk about this particular feature, which is your financial insight. It's not co-pilot, but it uses your artificial intelligence predictive analysis models to provide the uh, predictive analysis about your payment, cash flow and the budget. I should have added one more component to it, which is your AI summary, co-pilot AI summary, which is available across your different modules like on vendor customers, and workflows and other places which I also created a video, last video in this particular playlist. But let's talk about the financial insights today. Now if you talk about the financial insights, uh, as I said, has the three key major features which are available as of uh, today. One is the when a customer payment prediction which helps us to analyze the data of our customers, the different invoices which have been posted in, in, in the past and the payments which have been made by the customers. And then based on that, it helps us to predict that how likely we are going to get the payment on time or late or very late for the customers. And then we have the intelligent cash flow. Uh, we I have created uh, 
Uh, I have not created the videos, but I have written the blog, which are available on my blog side about the cash flow forecast. We talked about the advanced cash flow forecast, but now this is the on, on top of it that intelligent cash flow. We will talk about that, and then also the intelligent budget proposal, which which are available as part of our financial insight capabilities. Now, before we start talking about the what, what configurations are required. Let's talk about uh, the prerequisites to use this uh, this particular feature. So, first thing is we need to understand that when which regions this particular uh, this feature is available. So, it is available in U.S., Canada, U.K., Europe, Asia, Pacific, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, the Dynamics version which you would require to use this particular feature is your 10.0.21 or the later. You need to have the tier two box deployed for this particular feature to use. The license requirement, if we talk about the license requirement, so Financial Insights uses AI builder credits to create the financial predictions. So all the necessary licenses for this are included with the tenant license. And each D65 finance tenant is provided with 20,000 AI builder credit every month. So which should be enough for you. If it is additional credits are required, then the organization or the business can purchase directly from the AI builder. The another thing which you need to have is that, of course, the Power Platform integration, the Power Platform Admin Center deployed, your LCS should be connected with that, which is pretty much required for every each and every function with functionality which is being released nowadays. The next thing which you require is the historical data requirement. So as we understand all these three features require your predictive, are going to give the out outcome as a prediction. Now, which requires a historical data. Now from the customer payment prediction perspective, you need to have at least one year's worth of customer invoices to train the model. And uh, for the budget, you need to have, or for the cash flow, it is required to have at least three years of data recommended. And same for the budget, intelligent budget proposal, you need to have three years of the historical data to have the your AI model trained and give you the results. So these are the prerequisites which you have for, which you need to have for using this particular feature. Now let's move and understand what are the different configurations which we need. Broadly, we need four key configurations to be done in the system. First is that we need to have or we need to have the connection with your Microsoft Enter ID that should be configured in the system with the with your environment. And then you should have the database data verse configured. Then you need to have the financial insight add-in installed in your LCS. And then there is one more thing which you need to make sure in Dynamics 360 FNO, the process automation, there is a background bad job insight provisioning status check that should be running in the system. So these are the key four configurations which you need to do before you start training your AI models for these three different features. Talking about the Microsoft Enter Tenant, you need to have this in your configured with your Dataverse and the Power Platform applications. You need to have these two roles defined. You need to check that you have these two roles, system admin and system customizer access. And then you also need to have this particular application and app ID, which has been given at the on the portal as well, the learning portal. I'm going to share the a learning portal link as well for you so that you can go and validate all the information and all these steps there. The next step is once we have our LCS add-in and other things done, then we need to train our or deploy our AI models for these three features which we have as part of Financial Insight. So before we go to this, let's see in the system what are the how your financial add-in is installed and then also checking the the background patch job for that in the system okay if you look at this is the learning learn page where all the informations are given so you need to first deploy your environment and then this is what i was talking about before you go and configure your uh, and install the 
uh, I and try to install the financial set and uh, add in you need to have the uh, Microsoft enter tenant configured and these are the steps which you need to follow uh, for doing that and uh, apart from that as I spoke also about the uh, power platform the data was needs to be configured and then you have lastly the uh, the second last is your financial insight add-in which you need to install let me show you where in the LCS you will see that once you will log into your LCS and if you will go to that environment you will reach to this place and here you can see that I have installed this financial uh, insight and if you see that I have installed this in June month and since then I've been trying hit and uh, I mean doing the hit and trial for getting this to be in the working condition and you can click on the install uh, new add-in and you can select this uh, add-in and then install it in your environment so that is how you will install your financial insight uh, add, uh, uh, add in for yourself and then the last thing which you have is the process automation batch job which you need to check after this has been installed so how do you check that particular batch job is that you go to system admin and under system admin under the setup you have got the uh, process automation and once you click on the process automation you have the background uh, 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 processes here and you need to make sure that your inside provisioning status check bed job is running and then uh, if it is not then you can edit and then you can just change the uh, timing as per your current uh, bad job timing or possibly a day before so it will immediately run and then also you can quickly check whether it has uh, uh, run or not so you you can check the status here now once uh, all these things are done uh, then you are good to go to install or enable all three features and also deploy the model for your uh, uh, all three all, all three uh, features which you have so let's see where you will go and check those features and how you enable and how you deploy the model now so doing that what you can you can have a multiple uh, uh, navigations you can uh, check that from the credit and collection you can check from cash and bank uh, as well so under the cash and bank if you will go under setup you will find the cash flow forecast though it is just talking about the cash flow forecast but it is going to have uh, all three uh, menu items or the features available for you to enable and then deploy the model here so you will come to this particular uh, page where you will enable this particular feature and then you will find this model here and then you can just uh, train that model here then you need to enable similarly the feature for the budget proposal and then lastly you need to uh, for uh, your uh, uh, payment prediction and also when you are uh, enabling this feature you need to define how many days are considered for you as a very late uh, payment days so it has three payment buckets in which it will predict which is on time late and very late so very uh, on time is anything which has been paid on or before the due date so that's your on time payment prediction late is anything which is paid after due date and before the number of days here defined as a very late so if i have defined 30 days here so if my invoice due date is let's say 30th of september if anything paid before 30th September and on on before 30th September it is considered as on time but if I have any payment received for that invoice after 30th September and between 30th September to 1st of October to 30th of October because that's a 30 days window that is considered as a late payment but anything received post 30th of October that is considered as a very late so for your organization for your process what you what needs to be considered as a very late you need to define those number of days and anything between these number of days plus the due date 
is considered as late and anything before the due date and on or before due date is considered as on time. So now once you are done with this, my model is getting uh, uh, initialized. So this will uh, have your uh, prediction, uh, the, the model deployed, which means now these features are enabled and ready to use. Now, once this is done, there is one more last thing which we need to uh, do once your features are enabled and your models are deployed. And let's go to the PowerPoint and see what exactly is that. So once our these three features are enabled and the mod AI model is deployed for this, then the next thing which we need to do is that we need to configure the data integration project for this. Now for data integration project, we have three things to be done. First is we need to refresh all our data entities in FNO. And we need to make sure that we have this particular data entity available for us like payment prediction result. It should be available in our uh, uh, data entity list. The next thing is we need to create a data connection going to the make.powerapps.com and there we need to create the connection for uh, FNO application. I'm going to show you where it is. And then the next thing which we need to show, uh, we, which we need to do is that we need to configure those connections uh, sets with the three data enti uh, three entities which we are going to use like cash flow, customer payment prediction, and intelligent budget proposal. And why all these things are required? Because these will help us in doing publishing the predicted result back into the FNO. If you do, we do not configure this, the model will run successfully. It will have the predictions, but those predictions you will not be able to see in your FNO. So let's see how we configure these three things. So the first thing is that you need to go to the data management uh, uh, workspace. And there you have the framework parameters. And then here you need to just refresh your data entities if you have not done. If it is done, then uh, it is fine. Then the next thing which you need to check whether you have everything in place is that uh, you check that customer prediction result is available here as part of your list of data entity. So let's search that particular data entity here. So if you see this particular data entity is available for us to use. So this is where using the data integration project, which we, which I will show you how you will create where the results will be published here. Now let's move to, I'll go to the, 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 the learning page where it has been shown that how you create your, uh, all these three steps, the, the integration project connections, integra uh, integration project for the connection and then how do you configure the connection sets. So we have done with this step one, data management, then we need to go to the Power Apps portal and then we need to have the connection defined for this particular application. So let me log into the Power App portal and show you where that connection is being defined. So if you see here, uh, I have logged into that portal and here I have created a connection here and how you can create by clicking new and you need to select the FinOps app for creating the connection. So that is the step two, which you need to do. Once that is done, then you log and then you go and select the data integration and connection set. So let me show you how it is uh, being defined. So now I am into Power Platform Admin Center where I have uh, logged in here into my environment and left hand side I can see the data integration. And here you can see that I have my uh, the connection set where I have connected with that FinOps uh, the connection which I have created in the previous step. And once that is done, I need to select these th three uh, entities here. One is budget time series results, one is cash flow time series result and another one is customer payment insight result. Now all these three are going to be used to publish back your all the predictions which your AI model is going to do for you and publish it back into Dynamics 65 FNO for your further use. So this is very important and if you have not 
configured this, you won't be able to see any of the result in FNO. And you can even create a schedule for this if you want to refresh this uh, data on a on on a some frequency basis. I have scheduled for every day, so it is going to run every day and publish if and if there is any change available uh, for me all these three entities results so uh, that's it for this video i was thinking to show you that uh, the customer payment prediction also is been uh, the model has been deployed but looks like it has got into a, a, ref a scheduled refresh uh, uh, way so but i'm going to create another video where i'm going to talk about now each and every of these functionalities that how your customer payment prediction looks like using this AI model and then how the cash flow and the, how the budget proposal looks like. This video was more or less talking about the configuration of your financial insight and enabling these three features. Now in the future videos, we will be talking about each of these features and see that how it can be used and how it can be benefiting uh, us uh, in, for our customers and in our projects. So that's it for this video. Hope this is going to help you uh, in configuring this functionality and use this AI predictive models for your analysis and implementation to your projects. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.